Good morning, Tangerines from Las Vegas, Nevada. We are normally living in Mexico, specifically in the state of Quintana Roo, but we made a quick trip to Vegas to have some fun. And while we're here, we are going to tell you some mistakes that you should not make in Vegas, all of which we've made ourselves in the many, many trips that we have made in this fun yet dangerous city. The first thing, you just flew into Vegas and you're in the airport, you wanna start gambling because there's slot machines all over, just skip those. They're the worst odds in the city and go get to your hotel where you want to be. Then you're gonna head out the main doors and what will you see? A bunch of taxis. What have we learned from traveling to many, many countries across the world? Taxi drivers are some of the most scammy people you will ever encounter. What do they want? Your money. That's all they want. They don't have your best interest in mind. So instead, walk right past those, cross this bridge right here to the passenger pickup area so you can use the app AnyRide. If you want to get a taxi from the airport to the strip, you might be paying 30 or $40, whereas an Uber or a Lyft is 10 to $12. Before finding any ride, we were always opening Uber and we were opening Lyft to try to find the cheapest one. Well, this app saves you a ton of time because it shows both of them right there. It applies any discounts you might have and you can book it right from the app. One of my biggest mistakes in Vegas is wearing the cute shoes, not the comfy shoes, or what I did this time is, should we go down this way? Yeah. What I did this time was wear new shoes, new boots, thinking like these will be more comfortable than the shoes I have. Wrong! <laughs> my blisters all over my feet now from various shoes that I brought, so make sure to wear the most comfy shoes you have and break them in because this strip is huge and there's tons of walking to be done. Yeah, e even if you're taking taxis or Ubers or Lyft or whatever, you're still going to be doing a lot of walking. Even just from your hotel room to the Uber or Lyft pickup area, you could be walking like 15, 20 minutes just to get there. So comfy shoes are a must. The next big mistake you should not make is counting on winning. The last time we were in Vegas, we made these mistakes by sort of accidentally sensationalizing gambling. Really, we won a couple small jackpots and we were just super excited about it. But the reality is you're probably going to come home with less cash in your pocket than you came with. It's really easy to get in this gambler's mindset of I'm due for a win or oh, I'm on a huge winning streak set limits and know when to walk away. So let's say you want to lose no more than $300 and you're here for three days. Well, you might want to set a limit of $100 maximum losses per day. And also know when to walk away if you're winning. So don't count on winning. The casinos are good at getting your money. Gamble responsibly is what we're trying to say. The next big mistake that you're definitely going to want to avoid is forgetting that you're in the desert. And it's pretty easy to do this because you've got all these huge hotels around, all with their own plants and decor. So it doesn't really feel like a desert. If anything, it's like an oasis in the desert, but it's still the desert. So it's really easy to get sunburned while you're out and walking around. It's super easy to get dehydrated because you're sweating a lot and likely drinking a lot. <laughs> so don't forget you're in the desert, put your sunscreen on, drink lots of water throughout the day, and even maybe drink some electrolytes as well because it's very easy to get dehydrated. Oh yeah, that, that's an easy one to forget. Yeah. When you get to Vegas, there's going to be tons of great food and lots of free drinks. So the next big mistake you need to avoid is eating too much and drinking too much. In Vegas, you have all these great, awesome, filled with food buffets, and the mentality can sometimes be like, eat as much as you possibly can to get your money's worth. Sometimes, like, always. <laughs> pretty much always, yes. But when you eat too much, then the next few hours are gonna be spent in so much discomfort, so it kind of ruins part of the day. The other thing is, just about every drink you can possibly buy comes in the biggest size container you can imagine in various shapes and sizes, but you're going to be compelled to drink the whole thing and yet again you may end up in a sticky situation where you're freaking plastered and that ruins like part of the day so you have to be careful about you know overindulging
lounging and any of these things because it's pretty darn easy to do when you're in Vegas. Yeah, especially when there's tons of free drinks and that's the next big mistake is buying your own drinks when you can get them free while you're gambling. And you might think that you have to be betting big or something. No, you can be literally be playing slowly on penny slots and you'll still get unlimited free drinks in any casino. As long as you're consistently gambling. But obviously these drinks are free so you need to tip your cocktail waitress. If you want her to come back, that is, and because it's the right thing to do, they're free drinks, come on. <laughs> yeah, so at least a dollar a drink. So for free drinks you're gonna get in casinos, the general rule is the nicer the casino, the better the alcohol, the higher quality drinks you're going to get comp while you're playing. Our favorite places to play are the Wynn, Cosmopolitan, and Cromwell because we get high quality alcohol for free. You might be noticing that I'm carrying around this sweater with me while we're walking around. It is not cold outside at all, but it can be cold inside the casinos. So another big mistake you can make besides walking backwards with the camera <laughs> is to not bring at least a light sweater so you can put it on in the casinos because they can be a tit, a tit nipply. <laughs> they can be a tad cold. <laughs> so some people will say this is a good thing and that you can get lots of free stuff, but personally we don't think it's worth it at all, and that is getting sucked into timeshare deals. Well, how are you gonna know it's a timeshare? They're typically going to ask, hey, are you guys married? Are you here on your honeymoon? They're also gonna ask how old you are, how long you're in town. All those are questions that it's going to be a timeshare salesperson trying to get you to go to their thing and offering you free show tickets, free dinner, or something like that. And if you think it's worth the time, it could they could say it's an hour or two, it's probably likely five hours or thereabouts. If you think it's worth spending part of your trip to do that, by all means, go ahead. But in our opinion, if you have a short trip, you're gonna be wasting basically half a day mm -hmm. to end up getting a show or a few buffet passes. Is it really worth it? Uh, Instead of trying to save money by going to a timeshare presentation, we recommend playing the Win in My Vegas apps. For example, this trip, we're staying at the Win for four nights. It would have been $2,400 to get this room for those four nights because it's a really expensive time. There's a popular conference in town. So this is our first time staying at the Win Hotel. We're gonna give you a little tour of our room and let you know what we think. So you walk in here, there's this gigantic mirror. We have a closet and two super luxurious robes inside here, like really silky with kind of like this towel material on the inside, safe. And we got a room for some reason with two queen beds. Beds are very, very comfortable with soft bedding and everything. Pretty huge windows, there's a desk, dresser and chairs. But here's the interesting thing. As you see Jordan running laps right now, there's all this floor space. Like it's super empty in the middle of the room as if there could have been like a couch and a coffee table or something, but there's just this, all this empty space in here. Jordan, yeah. how, how many square feet is this? 650. So pretty big selling point for the win that the rooms are huge, but it's yeah. like almost... What the heck is the point of the room being this big? There's like nothing. The space is totally wasted in here. I think your so, typical hotel room is 300 or 350 square feet. Oh, and there is the bathroom as well. But as far as this middle area, it's it's like, I don't know, if you were thinking, oh, it's a great, gigantic, big room. Um, there's a lot of it that's not used. But this bathroom I think is really cool. A little vanity area to do makeup and stuff. Two sinks, a bathtub, and a shower. Really nice shower, like massaging head with the water. Do I think this is worth it? I like the Wynn Hotel. I like gambling here. The drinks are really nice when you're gambling and everything. We're just about to go check out the pool, but I don't think it's that much more special than some other hotels we've stayed at on this trip for less money. Yeah, but I mean, there's a huge conference going on, so it's not usually $600 a night. Usually it's around $200 a night. Still though, would you pay the $200 a night versus another hotel? No, I'd stay at Cosmopolitan Yeah. for the yeah. same price. Absolutely. 
I mean, and so I think it's cool. We use the Win app to get these uh, nights for free. But as far as other hotels that are com comparably priced, mm -hmm. uh, I just don't know that there's anything special. And something super interesting, we got in here and there was someone else's freaking clothes in like a drawer. <laughs> so I was like... <laughs> Uh, should we be worried about the cleanliness in here? I don't they know. They seem pretty embarrassed about it. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh, I forgot about this. Hey, Alexa, close the shades. Okay. Alexa, set the temperature to 76. Alexa, turn off the lights. Okay. So there's also that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> and with my Vegas, we get lots of free and discounted shows, free buffets, buy one get one buffets, all kinds of stuff like that. And we did a whole <laughs> video on saving money, getting comps, getting free rooms, so we're going to link to that here-ish. <laughs> Another mistake you're going to want to try and avoid is over planning while you're in Vegas or just not leaving enough time, like buffer time in between your activities, like meeting up with friends for brunch, going to a buffet, trying to get across the strip to go to a show or whatever it is. Things tend to take way longer in Vegas than you think they're going to take. Even getting from your room to your Uber downstairs is going to take wildly longer than you expect. So if you're going to plan a bunch of stuff, leave enough time in between. So we're here for four days this time and all we have planned this entire time is two shows just because there's so much to see and do here. Even if you have nothing planned, you will not get bored. Another big mistake is not signing up for the casino loyalty programs. Even if you don't gamble, just signing up for them gets you a 10% discount at most of the shops and most casinos. So do that. There's often a promotion for free play or free shows based on a certain amount of play. And what else can they get for you? Well, so signing up, even if you're not a big gambler, we did this at Cosmo. I didn't have an account, signed up uh -huh. for a loyalty card, and we played for a few hours during the day at like 20 cent machines. And yeah. you would think that isn't enough to do anything for you, but in actuality, a few months later, I got offers for complimentary nights, two complimentary nights on certain days that they had. So even that little bit of play, which by the way, we were also getting free drinks during that time. Uh -huh we still got free room offers. So that's the type of thing that can happen from these loyalty programs. You look at the, the cost for those nights, they're like minimum around $200. I've seen them as high as $800, probably mm -hmm. even higher than that. They are luxury rooms and Cosmo's my favorite hotel on the Strip. Yeah, so that's probably just an introductory offer though. That's mm -hmm. not something you're going to get repeatedly. So um, some casinos will do that as well. Like they'll offer you better offers than you would get for that amount of play just to try to get you to come back to the casino and but still, gamble there. Don't miss out on it by not signing up for these loyalty uh -huh. programs. Oh, I'm a bird. Please drop us a comment and let us know what big mistakes you have made, especially in Las Vegas on the Strip. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to see more videos that we have about our life in Mexico and travels all over the world. Including our other Vegas videos. So we're going to link those on the end screen. Please give this video a thumbs up, like it if you liked it. And one last thing. This is always so awkward to do in public. Go! that bell so you get notified when we put out our new videos. <laughs> and we will see you soon.